Good morning, everyone. So today is the start of the Smutathon weekend. I'm so excited. It is currently 7.30 a.m., super early. <laughs> but I really wanted to get a jump start on my TBR because there's so much that I want to read. And I already have added more things to my TBR just after seeing what everyone else is reading. I did read a book at midnight. Um, I read the group book and okay before we talk about it I'm gonna go make some coffee and then order some breakfast because I'm really craving IHOP. I just want pancakes like I want a stack like a huge stack of pancakes so I'm gonna go do that and then I'll come back and we could talk about the group book. <laughs> so how do we like my outfit? Yes I'm blending in with nature. I got camo. I got leaves i'm ready to go blend in with nature <laughs> okay so my breakfast should be here in like an hour so let's talk about the group book there's for the night by katie robert oh my god you guys this was so good so this book was a mmf romance and basically it was it's the start of a series so it was about 70 pages kind of like setting up this series and it's about a girl who it's her 23rd birthday and she goes to a club and while she's there she meets these two really gorgeous guys they ask her to come back to their hotel with them and have a night together. So she does and they have a night. And she finds out that the two guys are actually a prince who is on the run from his kingdom and his bodyguard. This was hands down the best smutty novella I've ever read in my life. I gave it five stars. It was just so good. Like it was everything i wanted and now i cannot wait to read the next book because the next book is actually like a full length novel and i'm so excited and here's the thing that i really like about katie robert because i've loved all of the books by her that i've read she's definitely my favorite smutty romance author but what i love about her books so much is that she actually like has a really good talent for writing sex scenes and i feel like like really good sex scenes are so under it's like such an underappreciated talent it's a skill okay it's hard and i find that like a lot of times with sex scenes they just don't make logical sense one minute a character will be in like this one position and then the next second they're in this other position and it's like there's no actual way that they could have gone from a to b like that's impossible but katie robert like she you're really like you're able to follow the movements you know what i mean like everything makes sense i just feel like i know what what all the characters are doing i find that you can especially tell how good she is at it when she's writing threesome scenes because those are even more difficult because you have even more people to work with but yeah this was so good great way to start off smutathon i'm really really glad that we picked this as the group book and i hope that everyone else is enjoying it. I also looked up who Katie Robert had like fan casted as the characters. Okay. <laughs> and the guys, um, she had Killian Murphy as the prince and Jai Courtney as the bodyguard. I'm just like, those are so perfect. And I was already like kind of picturing guys like that already but now that it's like confirmed that that's what they look like so yeah that's what i read last night now i think i'm gonna read the shortest thing that was on my tvr before my breakfast comes so i'm going to start the babysitter by jack harbin this is like 40 pages and it's about a guy who is a babysitter and he has a thing with the kid's dad who he's babysitting so it's a male male romance and I am very excited. Also, I'm just now realizing I don't know if I've ever filmed in my bedroom before. Well anyways, hello, this is my bedroom, welcome. Okay, I'm gonna go read The Babysitter and hopefully my breakfast comes soon because I am so hungry. Loki, hi. He's like, what the hell? You woke me up. Okay, so I finished The Babysitter by Jack Harbin, and I really liked it. It was short, but it was like short and sweet and got to the point and really, really good. It was probably one of the better male-male 
smutty romances that I've read, which just makes me even more excited to read more of his stuff. So yeah, like I said, it was about this guy who is babysitting for this family and the parents are getting separated. He's always like had a crush on the dad and he writes smutty romances and he has a notebook where he writes them in and he accidentally left the notebook at the dad's house and the dad found it and read it and realized that one of the characters in the smutty romance he was writing was based on the dad and so he like brought it up to the babysitter and was like really into it. So yeah, that was like the setup for it and I really enjoyed it. I also liked how it ended because I find that a lot of times these shorter novellas, especially the ones that are like 40 pages that are really short, the endings are just so unrealistic and like they always have to end with like, oh, we're in love and happily ever after and we're gonna get married. When it's a 40, 50 page novella, I don't need that, okay? I just want some like steamy times. I don't, I don't care about happily ever after. So yeah, I really liked this. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. I think now I wanna listen to an audiobook because I wanna try to alternate between ebooks and audiobooks. And I think while I have my breakfast, I'm gonna listen to Hearts in Darkness, I think is what it's called. It's on Audible Escape and it's about two people who get stuck in an elevator. So that should be fun. Oh my God. I just had one of the more embarrassing things of my life happen to me. Um, so I opened my window this morning and I, for I forgot that it was open. And so I started listening to the audiobook for Hearts in Darkness. And then the audiobook got to a sex scene and it was like real steamy. And then all of a sudden I just hear someone right outside go, whoa. <laughs> Oh my god, I want to die of embarrassment. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. Just hearing that, whoa. <laughs> That's going to be like imprinted in my mind forever. Okay, so I just finished Hearts in Darkness and I really enjoyed this. In my TBR, I mentioned that this is a book that came out a while ago. I think like 2012 and I've never heard of it yet. Every single one of my Goodreads friends it seems like has read it and loved it. So I'm glad I finally discovered this book and read it because I really loved it. So this takes place in an elevator. So basically these two people go into an elevator and all of a sudden like the power goes out and the elevator stops and they never actually saw each other, you know? Cause like when you go into an elevator, you don't really like look at the people who are in the elevator. So they never really saw each other. So now they're in an elevator that's completely pitch dark. They can't see each other and they start talking. The guy has severe claustrophobia because of some traumatic things that happened in his past. So she is like talking to him and trying to distract him. And while they're doing that, they just connect and then they start hooking up in the elevator in the pitch dark. Yeah, I really enjoyed this. I loved the element of them not knowing what each other looked like. I feel like that kind of added this extra layer to their chemistry where it wasn't just like it wasn't physical attraction it was an em like emotional attraction that they had to each other so it made it feel more romantic it reminded me of if you guys have seen that robert pattinson dior commercial where he's in an elevator making out with a girl and it's like super steamy that's what this book reminded me of so yeah i gave it four stars there is a sequel to it which i am excited to read because it's i think it's going to explore more of the couple's like actual relationship together because this book took place i think over the course of one day so i am excited to read that i might listen to the audiobook tomorrow if i finish my tbr early but we'll see i think next i've been holding off okay I've been holding off deviating from my TBR, but I cannot do it any longer. I'm sorry. Um, so next, <laughs> I'm gonna read Your Dad Will Do by Katie Robert. This is a book that she dropped a couple days ago. She'd been teasing it on her Instagram, and it just sounds like everything that I want. It's about a girl who finds or catches her fiance cheating on her. So in order to get revenge, she has sex with his dad. Yeah, um, it sounds really great. And like all of the teasers that Katie Robert was putting on her Instagram 
I just got very, very excited for it. <laughs> I keep seeing a lot of people reading it, um, and I just, I can't hold off any longer, okay? So that is what I'm gonna read. But honestly, so far, I've read three things and I've loved all of them. This is going so well. I just got a package in the mail. Ooh! I say it like I'm surprised and I didn't know this was coming. The book I got is Eidolon, Eidolon um, by Grace Draven. This is the sequel to Radiance and I'm so excited to read these. You might be seeing these books pop up on my May TBR. Everyone has been telling me to read this since I read Phoenix Unbound. So I just decided to go ahead and order the second book because they're not too long. So I figured I would wanna read them both at the same time. So yeah, I'm so excited for these. I cannot wait to read them. But basically these are fantasy romances that I've been told are like friends to lovers, arranged marriage. So that sounds super exciting. So I just finished Your Dad Will Do and it was really good. I mean, I expected it to be great. At this point, I just didn't expect that I'm gonna love everything by Katie Robert. But yeah, it was really good. It really reminded me of Birthday Girl by Penelope. It really reminded me of Birthday Girl by Penelope Douglas, except take out all the plot <laughs> and have it just be the smutty scenes. If you're looking for another book like Birthday Girl, definitely pick this one up because, I mean, I don't know what else to say about it because it was like 99% sex scenes. What? <laughs> Come here. <laughs> like there was no plot. It was just sex scenes, which I'm cool with, but I don't really know what else to say about it. I gave it four stars. I really liked it. And I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break right now and maybe watch a movie because I don't want to get burnt out and I still have a lot more books that I want to get to. Okay, so it is now the second day of Smutathon and I read something this morning. I made the mistake of going off my TBR. We'll talk about it while I do my makeup and not look so tired. Oh my God, my under eye circles are so bad right now. I've really been interested in Kay Webster's books because I just I hear so much about her books and like how crazy they are and honestly they kind of intimidate me a little bit just because I hear like that they're so wild they really cross the line um, in terms of like being problematic like that's kind of her thing which is cool and fine I don't hate that but I have been a little bit intimidated to read her books so I picked one that I thought was like gonna be the most not tame but like the easiest for me to read so this was called bad 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 which should have already been an indication of how i was going to feel about it so this was basically two different stories that connected and their age gaps and here's the thing i really really like age gaps but this was just so creepy so basically um, the first story is about this girl who, I can't remember if they ever said her age, but I'm pretty sure she was in high school because she mentioned being a cheerleader. So it starts with her and her father's best friend is coming to visit. He hasn't visited in like a year and he's like this really hot guy who she's always had a thing for, but like she's a kid. Um, so he shows up and he's immediately like, oh my God, you've grown up. And within like 10 pages, he's taking her top off to see her new tattoo. I should have stopped, I should have stopped because already I was kind of getting the creeps and he just seemed so like predatory and creepy. I don't know, I feel like when it comes to age gaps, first of all, they have to be both adults. And second, I need like the older person to show some sort of like, like conflict, you know? Like I need them to acknowledge the fact that there is an age gap and that there is a power imbalance, but this guy was like, ooh, you're like young and small and <laughs> like he was really into the fact that she was young. So her father comes home, her father is the sheriff and he comes home and the, th the three of them decide to watch a movie. So they're in the living room and her and the dad's best friend are both sitting on the couch under a blanket. 
and the dad is like sitting in a chair next to them and this is where it really like started to gross me out they're literally like watching a movie with her dad he's in the room he's talking to them like he's he's making commentary about the movie and they're talking to him back and so all while that's going on he the dad's best friend starts fingering her under the blanket you know she's like real getting off and they're still like talking to her dad like her dad is making commentary through the th through the entire thing and she's over there like having the time of her life and not only that but then he goes to the kitchen and he comes back with ice cubes and he starts <laughs> He starts sticking ice cubes up her vagina and, I'm, and it literally just like keeps going back and forth between her getting off and her dad talking to them. Oh my god, it was so creepy. And like the dad's best friend kept making comments about like how young she is and how like <laughs> like t how tight she is and how young and how small and like I don't know. It was just creepy. I got the ick. It was super creepy. Okay, so that's the first story. That now, now the second story is about her dad. So I mentioned that he's a sheriff and her best friend is like the tr like the teen troublemaker, so she's always getting in trouble with the law and her dad has a thing for her best friend who's also I think a teenager. I could have missed it, but I don't think it was ever mentioned the, the girl's ages. But again, like they were written very young and they definitely seemed like they were in high school. So the dad has a thing for his daughter's best friend. And at this point I was already just like really not having a great time, really grossed out. And these two, like the two older guys, they just seemed like such creeps. Like they weren't, I don't know, they just like, they were very into the fact that they were older and the girls were younger. I don't know, I did not like this. I ended up giving it one star. And it sucks cause like I really love age gap, but it definitely, age gap is the type of thing that if it's not done right for me, it could be the worst thing in the whole world. <laughs> I'm not like totally opposed to reading more Kay Webster books, but <laughs> I think I definitely will be a little bit more cautious now because I thought that this was a safe book to read like out of all of her books I thought that this was one of the like safer ones that I might enjoy so now I'm just like oh my god what am I gonna get myself into the next time I pick up one of her books so I think now I'm going to start a book that I know that I will like um, or at least hope that I will like and that is gonna be the sequel to Praying for Rain um, and this is called I think it's called Fighting for Rain by B.B. Easton. I don't know why I'm trying to talk while I'm doing this. So these are post-apocalyptic romances. Um, the first book I gave five stars and it was one of my favorite romances that I read last year. And it follows these two people who basically have to team up together at the end of the world to survive and they fell in love. And the first book ended on a cliffhanger. So I'm really excited to see like where it goes. I really liked the world and the romance between the two main characters was so good. So I feel like this is gonna be a safe option in terms of like, I already know I like these characters and this world and I like the writing. But also, side note, I love, I've been seeing everyone or most people seem to be enjoying the group book, which I'm really excited about because I loved it and I love Katie Robert and I just want everyone to read her books and love them. Even though they're like probably the most smutty, steamy books I've ever read in my life. So I've noticed that some people weren't expecting that and they were like kind of shocked by how actually steamy her books are. Like they're, she goes there. She really goes there. Okay, so I'm gonna go start fighting for rain and then I will come back and update you guys with my thoughts when I'm done. It shouldn't take me too long because I think it's only about 200 pages. Okay, so I just finished Fighting for Rain and today did not go as well as yesterday. I ended up giving it 3.5 stars. I think that, that it really suffered from second book syndrome. This is a trilogy and just in general, I don't like trilogies. I don't think it is I don't think three books ever works or it rarely works for me. Either it is too many books for the story that you're trying to tell and so the second book ends up being like really stretched out or it's not enough books and the last book like wraps up too quickly. And I feel like this fell into the former. It was too many books. This book could have been condensed to like 50 pages added on to the beginning of the third book because really there was a good 40% of this book where nothing happened like 
nothing happened. For a romance book, the, the reason that people are reading it is for the romance. And so to have the love interest literally disappear for over half of the book, he was just gone. Like, we didn't even get his point of view for a long time. Like, he was just like gone and that was so boring because the main character was just like moping around for like a hundred pages doing nothing wishing that her love interest was there i don't know i didn't like it but i still <laughs> i'm still giving it 3.5 stars because i love the world i love like the writing style and i love the romance between the two main characters the scenes that they were in as few as they were were really really great i love their romance and their chemistry it is like just super have a really strong emotional bond and like it makes me feel a lot of things <laughs> and the way that this ended it ended on another cliffhanger and i am dying to read the next one i just have to know how this story is gonna wrap up i don't want this to deter people from reading the first book because i gave that book five stars it was one of my favorite romances of last year and even though this was kind of a disappointment i still in general love this romance and i'm hoping that the third book makes up for a lackluster second book. So since the two books that I read today were just not the best, it kind of put me in a little bit of a reading slump. I was kind of nervous to pick up anything else. I didn't really want to. So that is all that I read today. It is now the end of Smutathon. So quickly, I'm gonna do a ranking. This is like my favorite part of Smutathon. Um, I'm gonna rank all the books that I read in terms of my enjoyment. We'll start with the absolute worst and get that out of the way. The worst one that I read was Bad 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 by Kay Webster. It was bad bad bad. <laughs> so yeah, that was definitely the worst. Next up, I would put Fighting for Rain. It wasn't bad, it just wasn't great. It was definitely a disappointment. It really didn't need to be its own book because other than the first 20 pages and the last maybe 30 pages nothing happened so only 50 pages out of like 240 were things that actually needed to happen i think i have two books that are tied so hearts and darkness by laura k and then the babysitter by jack harbin i really enjoyed both of these but they're not like new favorites but i am excited to read more from both of these authors and i forgot to mention when i was talking about the babysitter that jack harbin is an own voices male male romance author so i do get a lot of questions sometimes because i am very vocal about the fact that i don't love reading queer romances specifically male male romances written by straight authors i'm not like a Against them but it is something that I am cautious about so I do get questions you know like okay then who are some own voices authors and I'm happy to say that I can now recommend Jack Harbin this was great I cannot wait to read more of his books so then we have the two books that I read by Katie Robert shocker these are definitely my top two. Oh my god I don't know I think your dad will do is next because I did because I did really like that one but it, it is a standalone so I'm not like sitting here like excited to read more of that story the story is done whereas there's for the night I am in love with it and so excited to read the rest of the series it follows these same three characters and i'm just like dying to start the next book so there's for the night is my number one favorite bad 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 is trash don't read it so that is going to be the end of my smutathon vlog i hope everyone who participated had a great time and i hope you guys read some great things or were able to get some recommendations for things Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!